Before we get into today's episode, I want to let you know about a source of powerful free resources to help you as a parent or grandparent get equipped to invest in the faith of the next generation. Our Next Gen website has been designed to help empower you to navigate tough issues with the young people in your life. At NextGen, you'll find articles, entertainment reviews from a Christian perspective, parenting stories, helpful parenting guides, and even answers to the tough questions. All these resources are free as you engage on the front line of raising the next generation for Jesus. So why not register today at premierinsight.org forward slash resources to receive free resources from NextGen. That's premierinsight.org forward slash resources. And now it's time for today's podcast. Hello, friends. I'm Rick Warren, and welcome to Spurgeon Sermons. This is the official podcast brought to you by Premier and Spurgeon's College. You know, the teachings of Charles Spurgeon have had a personal impact on my life in a profound way, and I'm confident they'll do the same for you. So get ready to be challenged, equipped, and guided by Charles Spurgeon, who is universally regarded as the greatest English preacher in the history of the church. Christ our Passover. A Sermon by Charles Spurgeon, Part 5 For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 If, my hearer, your unwashed spirit shall stand unshriven before its maker, if your guilty soul shall appear with all its black spots upon it, unsprinkled with the purple tide, how will you speak? When you see the flash from the scabbard, the angel's sword swift for death and winged for destruction, and when it shall cleave you asunder. I think I see you standing now. The angel is sweeping away a thousand there. There is one of your companions. There is one with whom you used to sin. There is another who, attending the same chapel like you, became a despiser of religion. Now death comes nearer to you, just as when the reaper sweeps the field and the next ear trembles because its turn shall come next. I see a brother and a sister swept into the pit. Have I no blood upon me? Then, O rocks, it were kind of you to hide me. You have no benevolence in your arms. Mountains, let me find in your caverns some little shelter. But it is all in vain, for vengeance shall cleave the mountains and split the rocks open to find me out. Have I no blood? Have I no hope? Ah, no, he smites me. Eternal damnation is my horrible portion. The depth of the darkness of Egypt for thee, and the horrible torments of the pit from which none can escape. Ah, my dear hearers, could I preach as I could wish, could I speak to you without my lips and with my heart, then would I bid you seek that sprinkled blood and urge you by the love of your own soul, by everything that is sacred and eternal, to labour to get this blood of Jesus sprinkled on your souls. It is the blood sprinkled that saves a sinner. But when the Christian gets the blood sprinkled, that is not all he or she wants. He wants something to feed upon. And oh, sweet thought, Jesus Christ is not only a saviour for sinners, but he is food for them after they are saved. The paschal lamb, by faith we eat. We live on it. You may tell, my hearers, whether you have the sprinkled blood on the door by this, do you eat? the lamb. Suppose for a moment that one of the old Jews had said in his heart, I do not see the use of this feasting. It is quite right to sprinkle the blood on the lintel, or else the door will not be known. But what good is all this inside? We will have the lamb prepared, and we will not break his bones, but we will not eat of it. And suppose he went and stored the lamb away, What would have been the consequence? Why, the angel of death 
would have smitten him as well as the rest, even if the blood had been upon him. And if, moreover, that old Jew had said, There, we will have a little piece of it, but we will have something else to eat. We will have some unleavened bread. We will not turn the leaven out of our houses, but we will have some leavened bread. If they had not consumed the lamb, but had reserved some of it, then the sword of the angel would have found the heart out, as well as that of any other man. Oh, dear hearer, you may think you have the blood sprinkled. You may think you are just. But if you do not live on Christ, as well as by Christ, you will never be saved by the paschal lamb. Ah, some say, we know nothing of this. Of course you don't. When Jesus Christ said, Except ye eat my flesh and drink my blood, ye have no life in you. There were some that said, This is a hard saying. Who can bear it? And many from that time went back and walked no more with him. They could not understand him. But Christian, dost thou not understand it? Is not Jesus Christ thy daily food? And even with the bitter herbs, is he not sweet food? Some of you, my friends, who are true Christians, live too much on your changing frames and feelings, on your experiences and evidences. Now that is all wrong. When a man lives on his frames and feelings, that is as much as if the child of God should live on some tokens that he received in the sanctuary that never were meant for food, but only to comfort him a little. What the Christian lives on is not Christ's righteousness, but Christ. He does not live on Christ's pardon, but on Christ. And on Christ he lives daily, on nearness to Christ. Oh, I do love Christ preaching. It is not the doctrine of justification that does my heart good. It is Christ the justifier. It is not pardon that so much makes the Christian's heart rejoice. It is Christ the pardoner. It is not election that I love, half so much as my being chosen in Christ ere worlds began. I, it is not final perseverance that I love so much as the thought that in Christ my life is hid, and that since he gives unto his sheep eternal life, they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of his hand. Take care, Christian, to eat the paschal lamb and nothing else. I tell you, if you eat that alone, it will be like bread to you, your soul's best food. If I live on something else but the Saviour, you are like one who seeks to live on some weed that grows in the desert instead of eating the manna that comes down from heaven. Jesus is the manna. In Jesus, as well as by Jesus, we live. Now, dear friends, in coming to this table, we will keep the Paschal Supper. Once more, by faith, we will eat the Lamb. By holy trust, we will come to a crucified Saviour and feed on his blood and righteousness and atonement. And now, in concluding, let me ask you, are you hoping to be saved, my friends? One says, well, I don't hardly know. I hope to be saved, but I do not know how. Do you know, you imagine I tell you a fiction when I tell you that people are hoping to be saved by works, but it is not so. It is a reality. In travelling through the country, I meet with all sorts of characters, but most frequently with self-righteous persons. How often do I meet with a man who thinks himself quite godly because he attends the church once on a Sunday, and who thinks himself quite righteous because he belongs to the establishment? As a churchman said to me the other day, I am a rigid churchman. I am glad of that, I said to him, because then you are a Calvinist, 
if you hold the articles. He replied, I don't know about the articles. I go more by the rubric. And so I thought he was more of a formalist than a Christian. There are many persons like that in the world. Another says, I believe I shall be saved. I don't owe anybody anything. I have never been a bankrupt. I pay everybody 20 shillings in the pound. I never get drunk. And if I wrong anybody at any time, I try to make up for it by giving a pound a year to such and such a society. I am as religious as most people, and I believe I shall be saved. That will not do. It is as if some old Israelite had said, We don't want the blood on the lintel. We've got a mahogany lintel. We don't want the blood on the doorpost. We have a mahogany doorpost. Whatever it was, the angel would have smitten it if it had not the blood upon it. You may be as righteous as you like. If you have not the blood sprinkled, all the goodness of your doorposts and lintels will be of no avail whatever. Yes, says another, I am not trusting exactly there. I believe it is my duty to be as good as I can, but then I think Jesus Christ's mercy will make up the rest. I try to be as righteous as circumstances will allow, and I believe that whatever deficiencies there may be, Christ will make them up. That is, as if an Israelite had said, Child, bring me the blood. And then when that was brought, he had said, Bring me a ewer of water. And then he had taken it and mixed it together and sprinkled the doorpost with it. Why, the angel would have smitten him as well as anybody else, for it is blood, blood that saves. It is not blood mixed with the water of our poor works. It is blood, 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 and nothing else. And the only way of salvation is by blood. For without shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Have precious blood sprinkled upon you, my hearers. Trust in precious blood. Let your hope be in a salvation sealed with an atonement of precious blood and you are saved. Thank you for listening, friends. This podcast was brought to you by Premier in association with Spurgeon's College. For more Christian podcasts, sermons, and music, head back to the website premier.plus and sign in for free. This podcast is an outreach of Premier Insight and it's made possible through the support of listeners like you. And your support today is so vital. We want to thank you for your generous gift by giving you exclusive access to Science, Faith and the Evidence for God Apologetics course. This nine-module course invites you to learn from John Lennox, one of the most celebrated Christian thinkers of our time through conversations with atheist thinker Michael Ruse and secular talk show host Dave Rubin. You'll be empowered to confidently speak into conversations on faith, science, and why believing in God is not only reasonable, but logical. The course is free to you to thank you for your gift to help Premier Insight equip more Christians to confidently speak into the biggest issues of our culture and defend their Christian faith with conviction and grace. To get access to science, faith, and the evidence for God, simply go to premierinsight.org forward slash Spurgeon. That's premierinsight.org forward slash Spurgeon. Thank you for your support.